earlier. Social call, Jeffrey. So, who's this? I'm Dr. Tony Hill. Doctor? But I'm not ill. What are you trying to do? You keep making mistakes. Well, you're the one making mistakes. What's this? A footprint found at the scene. Explain the scene. John Freeman's murder. Johnny's dead. You saw the photos. Didn't you recognise him? Last time I saw him, he had a face. What size shoe did you take? Why? We're going shopping. The sooner you tell her, Gavin, the sooner we can call a halt to this. Eight. Right. No more questions. Hang on. Surely you could just check Gavin's case file. There's absolutely no point in any of us being here. Do you like it in here, Gavin? Well, I prefer the outdoors. The prison officers, how do they treat you? They only beat me on Sundays. The rest of the time, we're best of friends. Really sorry, but your brother's here, Gavin. He's a bit worked up. He wants to talk to you. What the hell do you think you're doing? Just telling Gavin that he's... Out! We're in the middle of an interview. Is your brother your only family? It's the other way around. I'm all he's got. To tell you the truth, he's lost without me. How lost? According to the visitors' list, George tries to see Gavin every day. Most of the time, he just sits outside, staring at the building, looking lost. Classic family setup: one strong son, one weak son. Father's a bully, picks on the weak one. George. Gavin steps in, proves to be tougher than his father. In that moment, Gavin is everything to George, protector, saviour, hero. But with Gavin locked up, George is cast adrift. He can't function. He suddenly realises the world is full of bullies. He needs his brother and he needs him now. And the best way to achieve that is to prove his brother's innocence. By killing John Freeman. Mm. We should bring George in. Mm. Applies the pressure. My instinct would be to play it as if you're an annoyed parent. And he'll respond to that. What are your parents like? Oh, Mum was classic delusional. Desperately believing only in the good. It was a natural defence against her fear that Dad had fallen out of love with her. Yeah, she didn't realise he just had difficulty in expressing it. I was just making small talk, actually. Yeah. I see movement. We're bringing George Cochrane in. Keeping it in the family, eh? That should make that smug brother of his squirm a little. If there's one thing I hate, it's smugness. Me too, sir. Hello, George. got my left foot. It's not that sort of video shot. Yours will do then. I'm fine, thanks. I'm Tony. I'm Tony. Oh, I'm Tony, too. Pleased to meet you, Tony.
Tony Hill. Tony, we've got George Cochran. Bastard takes size nines. I didn't do anything, I swear. Let's get him in a cell. No! No, I didn't do anything! I didn't! Just move! I'm claustrophobic! Yeah. You got the wrong man. It's George, don't stop. Carol. Oh, Can you hear me? It can't! Carol! It can't! Hey, there's an office going to spare. Carol! Great! George! Carol, listen to me. If he finds a prospect of a cell that terrifying, then he didn't do that murder. I didn't do anything. I didn't. You're going nowhere. I said unsettle Gavin Cochrane. I didn't mean hurl his brother through a window. With all due respect. I'd watch my back from now on. Because if Cochrane blames you. It's George. Let's go again from the top. Evidence says George did it. You say he isn't capable. George's claustrophobia is extreme. Now, chances are his father or mother locked him in dark rooms or cupboards when he was young. And Gavin turned up to unlock them. Yeah. So maybe this is George returning the favor. I mean, if you had a brother like Gavin, you'd jump out of a plane if he told you to, wouldn't you? Well, maybe George would do that. But he would never enter a confined space. He'd need months, maybe years of therapy before he could do what Gavin wanted. That's assuming it is what Gavin wanted. So, Gavin got out, framed his brother? That doesn't make sense. Not with the perceived dynamics of their relationship. 